Howdy, folks. I'm that cursed sock puppet that you left in Moldavia. I'm Amber, and I've never been to Moldavia. And here's some spooky Reddit. It's not spooky. All right, folks, our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for asking my daughter not to have adult fun time while staying at our house? My wife and I are in our late 50s. We have four grown kids, one of our middle kids, a 26-year-old female, and her husband, a 20-something-year-old male, are in the process of buying their second house. The first one sold quickly, and the new owners offered extra for a quick possession. They didn't get possession of the new place until January 1st, so they had to leave their place on November 1st. They had planned on getting an Airbnb, but my wife and I have an apartment over our garage and offer them that space. Things have been going really well. They both work, so they went about life. My wife loves to cook for more than one person, so they've been eating dinners with us most nights. That part has been wonderful. It's been so nice having my daughter around in the evenings. The other night, after they had gone back to the apartment, I went to get something from the garage. The apartment can be accessed from the outside and the inside. There is a staircase inside the garage and only an interior door separating the garage from the apartment. I could hear them, very obviously, having adult fun time. I felt it was a bit disrespectful to be doing that when they are staying with their parents. I thought I had raised her better than that. I told my wife and she laughed and she said, and I quote, good for them. I couldn't let it go. So the next night at dinner, I brought up how disrespectful we find it for them to be having adult fun time in our house. My wife did not back me up. She made sure to tell them that it wasn't we, but only me who felt that way. My daughter and her husband excused themselves from the meal. I expected an apology, but instead, <laughs> they moved out the next day. My wife says that they are a married couple and aren't even in our house, that I was a jerk, but in my mind, they are staying in an apartment on our property. They could at least abstain until they don't live with us. I would never dream of disrespecting <laughs> my parents by doing that in their house. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Yeah, you're the jerk. And why don't you go stay with your parents for two months and uh, see how you feel? So I think that this is I can understand where he's coming from in the respect that it was probably very uncomfortable to walk in and uh, be exposed to that. Right. So that's certainly going to bring up some uncomfortable feelings. However, asking your kid, adult married kids, <laughs> married or not kids who uh, have a long term partner with them to while they're staying in your house to refrain for two months is a lot to ask right mm -hmm. well and then like going behind his wife's back and being yeah, like yeah. we decide this was disrespectful yeah the whole putting words into his wife's mouth like she made it clear like this is fine whatever yeah, yeah. and then he decides no this is an issue i'm gonna say sh this is our issue yeah, and I think that that was really terrible of him to try and force his wife to back him up like this. And she just clearly didn't care. And he should have realized from that conversation that she did not care and she wasn't going to confront them about this. She was like, good for them. And I don't know how he thought that he was going to be able to actually like persuade her at this point in time. I don't know. And like this is their home for the next two months like you extend an invitation to them mm -hmm. most people are going to assume that that means they can use their home as a home and not yeah. like i'm a i'm a sneaky teenager now like yeah i mean this is clearly a si little bit of a different situation they're in an attached apartment you should have just let it go mm -hmm. <laughs> let me know what you folks think so anyhow take care and good luck and HDKB824 says, you're the jerk, they are married and aren't in your house. You didn't lay this expectation of respect out before they moved in. The list can go on. They don't owe you an apology. It seems like your wife gets it, but you come across as a huge prude. And OP replies, they may not be directly in the house, but still in our garage apartment. We almost had them move into the basement suite. Would you agree about it being inappropriate if they moved in there? I would still think it was fine. And also, <laughs> Two like, months. explain to me how it's disrespectful. I don't know. I, I think that this is an odd 
form of respect, right? I just don't know why parents would even care. Like your kid, once your kids are adults, like you don't have to parent them anymore. You're more on an equal like playing field. And mm -hmm. yeah, there are going to be rules you set for your house, like yeah, but that you'd set for any guests. But, yeah, like... and the wife doesn't seem to care either, mm -hmm. right? And HDKB824 replies, depends. Your wife and you seem to have a different opinion on this issue and whether it's disrespectful. I still think that if you don't lay this expectation down prior to them moving in, it's foolish to expect an apology for something that's normal for married couples to do. They were going to be living there for two months. It seems like a lot to ask of a couple with a healthy adult life. Also, sounds like they are ready to have other living arrangements, and you folks offered to have them move in with you. Then through this abstain from adult fun time thing after the fact. Were they supposed to read your mind? That's what I wanted to know. I mean, it's like OP expects them to just know what his expectations were. Mm -hmm. And OP replies, I shouldn't have had to lay the expectation down. You don't have adult fun time when you're staying with other people. How is this not common knowledge or common decency? And I mean, there are certainly, I think some people do have this cultural expectation. I'm not going to get into it. I think that this is like a very, like, divisive topic so i will let people you know hash it out in the comments below while we move on all right folks our next letter is titled am i a jerk for putting a baby up for adoption when he was abandoned at my doorstep and folks i have my doubts about this one much like the story to yesterday <laughs> i am a little incredulous so let me know what you think i a 28 year old female have or i should say had a friend, also a 28-year-old female, and we'll call her Marcy. Marcy had a son about six months ago. I've only seen him twice, at three weeks and three months. Marcy and I haven't been that close since she delivered her son because she's prioritized the baby. This is understandable. What's not understandable to me is that she's absolutely infuriated at me right now. My apartment is on the bottom floor of a converted house, so my front door faces outside. A couple of days ago, my doorbell rang at 7 a.m. After quickly getting dressed since I was still in my robe, from having just gotten out of the shower, I found a baby boy in a baby carrier at my front doorstep. With a half full bottle and a note saying, please take care of him for now. No name signed. No name to refer to the baby or the kid by. No explanation, nothing. Because I'd taken me a few minutes to answer the door, whoever had dumped him just had left. Panicking, I tried to call Marcy to ask for advice, but I got her answering machine. I left a message, but she didn't call back. Since I had no means to care for him and had to get to work, I read that you could take a baby to a fire station and give it to an EMT or a firefighter and put it up for adoption. I took the baby, who was crying practically the whole time, down there with a note and explained that I had no idea whose kid it was or how long for now meant. I also said that I had nothing to help care for the baby, no toys, no crib, no changing table, no spare diapers, none of that. They said that the child might be abandoned, but they would take him to an orphanage if they couldn't find out who had left him like that. Well, after about 9 p.m. that night, Marcy showed up asking, where is he? I was confused and asked, wait, was that your kid? It would have helped for me to have known that. I told her that I turned the kid in. She insulted me for not recognizing her kid or her car. I asked her how many times I'd seen the kid, twice, and he's grown in three months, and how she knew I'd seen her car. I hadn't. I asked if she had gotten my call, and she said no, that she was taking a day for herself, so her phone had been off. I asked her if she remembered that I, you know, had a job, and she said that she didn't care. I told her that she was being a baby herself and that she should go down to the fire station to claim the baby that somebody had abandoned at my doorstep without contact info, proper equipment, or even a name. 
she said that she was going to sue me and stormed off. And since then, she's been sending me threats via text message calling me a jerk and that I should have known my duty <laughs> as a friend or whatever BS. But now I'm having second thoughts and think that maybe I might have been in the wrong. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think, jerk or not the jerk? Absolutely not the jerk. Someone just left a baby on your doorstep yeah. that you weren't equipped to care for. Yeah. You had to work. Like, it is not your responsibility to take care of mystery baby. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's pretty much the key here. This isn't OP's responsibility. The OP, you had a baby who you couldn't properly care for, and you didn't know how to take care of them. So having them in your care might have actually been harmful and you recognize that so you went and did the responsible thing and you turned it over to somebody who could take care of the kid right and also you had a job you have work you can't just not show up to work one day right yeah and you never signed up for this like your mm -hmm. friend is like oh it's your duty you didn't choose to have a kid yeah it would be different if your friend had contacted you like oh a week ago and been like oh hey next tuesday can you take care of the kid and then I mean, then if they dropped them off and you had just forgotten that this was them, then like still not good for them just to drop a baby off on a doorstep, but a little more understandable why they would be upset and be like, you agreed to do this, right? But that's not the case here. So this is just her being entitled. So that's my thoughts. Anyhow, take care and good luck. And Wicked Angel Love says... Well, first of all, the child is not going up for adoption the same day, so she can go down there and get her baby. Most of the time, those kids go into foster care first, while the authorities try to find the parent, being that you brought the baby in, not the actual mother. That said, not the jerk. If she needed help, she should have just asked you. Edit ad, do you think it was your friend's child, or did you really think it was a random baby? And OP replies, I had no idea whose kid it could have been, and was pretty overwhelmed. I called Marcy to ask for advice since she's the only one who I know who has an infant. It did not occur to me that a friend would do something like this. And Ill Conversation 5210 says, I'm almost tempted to call BS on this post. Who has an answering machine anymore? Who leaves a baby on the doorstep? An orphanage? And you did not put the baby up for adoption. Anyway, if this is true, not the jerk, she should have been prosecuted for child endangerment and probably the child would be put into foster care for a while so she can get her life together and prove she's responsible. Weird. And OP replied, I meant voicemail. Sorry, I've never been able to call it anything other than the answering machine. I don't know why. All right, folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for not forgiving my girlfriend for forgetting my birthday? I will try to keep it short. Basically, I have been with my girlfriend for six years and every year she wishes me a happy birthday and gives me a gift. But this birthday, I was interstate and she completely forgot my birthday and didn't even give me a simple happy birthday wish and I'm heartbroken over it. I tried to be understanding as she was going through stuff and had the worst luck ever. Two days before my birthday, her father passed away and on my birthday, she and her mother got a very bad case of COVID and was nearly hospitalized. But even if you're going through stuff, I don't think it's hard to remember or <laughs> am I being a jerk here? Maybe I need to get things in perspective and stop being a jerk, but I want other people's opinions over it. She apologized many times over and felt super guilty, but I'm not sure if I for should forgive her or not. So basically, am I a jerk for not forgiving my girlfriend? Thanks in advance for any comments. <laughs> yes. Yes, you're the jerk. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I understand feeling a little internal frustration that she forgot your birthday, but she's going through a lot. Her dad dies two days before, and then she's very sick to the point she has to be almost hospitalized on your birthday. Like, Probably texting you is not going to be the first thing on her mind. Op, op, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get up <laughs> close to the camera here for a second. Op, listen very, very carefully. Op, no one cares that much about your birthday. I'm sorry. No, you do not have a right to feel upset or even ask her for forgiveness. 
because she, quote, forgot your birthday. Well, you have the right to feel upset internally, but you don't. You should not take it out on no, her. You I should know. recognize that these the, are extenuating circumstances. The, yeah, these. this is not normal circumstances. She's wished you per happy birthday every single year. The one year where she has a family member die and she's almost hospitalized for COVID, she forgets. Yeah, get over yourself, OP. That's that's what I have to say. That's my thoughts. Let me know what you folks think, though. Maybe I'm being overly harsh. <laughs> Tell me in the comments below if you think so. Anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here. And Amber has some jokes. Since Brian wanted to make this a spooky episode, I've got a nice spooky <laughs> joke for you. <laughs> What do ghosts put on hot turkey sandwiches? Boo berries. <laughs> no, I don't know. Why would, why would, that's all of the food, only food I thought of that that very second. I know that makes no sense, folks. I know you don't put blueberries on, on turkey sandwiches. I'm not some kind of, uh, uh, I mean, we're, uh, we are in Maine. We so. are in Maine. So maybe, maybe that is what you put on hot turkey sandwiches. <laughs> Gravy. Oh. <laughs> Terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> you know, I have licorice spice, which of course Amber provided to me, and I guessed correctly on my very first try with no help at all. <laughs> By first, he means third. <laughs> so, yeah. And I picked without Google. So you all can blame Amber for my tea selection today. <laughs> All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving it a like. And if you didn't, consider giving it a dislike. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you all tomorrow. Bye.